This week's word of the week is going to be crater or weld crater. Um, before I get into that, I just wanted to really update you on uh, something that we're starting to do to get a more online learning presence. In Facebook, we started a TV weld, welding help and suggestions group where we can have anybody come in and ask questions about welding. And I'm going to describe this more towards the end of the video in case you don't want to hear about this. So if you want to hear about this, keep going to the end of the video. I'll describe this better. Uh, but for right now, we're going to go into what a weld crater is. And where this came about was I have a test that I give in a freshman welding course, Introduction to Shielded Metal Arc Welding, where we go over the D1.1 Structural Steel Welding Code and what makes a visual inspection acceptable. And one of the questions on one of the tests I give are what must be filled with the full cross-section of the weld, and that is craters. And I had students that were answering crater, and I asked them, what is a crater? Nobody knew. I went into the sophomore courses and I said, hey, what is a weld crater? They all answered crater, but none of them knew what it was. It was kind of shocking because I've been running that course for about 15, 16 years and nobody has ever asked me what a crater was, but that was an answer in one of their quizzes. So I got a little nervous and I thought I'd blow this thing up because it's very important that you know what a crater is. That being said, if you're going through a schooling uh, situation for welding, and somebody says or puts an answer on a test and you have no idea what they're uh, what they're talking about, you need to ask. I don't understand what a crater is because it's very basic and it's very important to know. On a scale of one to 10, I forgot to write that up here. If you don't know it, one being not a big deal, 10 being a big deal, if you don't know what a weld crater is and you're graduating from some kind of program, I don't really care what it is at any level, it's probably around like an eight. You need to know what a weld crater is. So that being said, I'm going to kind of go over this stuff and then we'll go out and I'll find some um, actual welds out in the lab and I will show you the actual crater, all right? So what is a crater? Once I showed students what it was, we went over and I said, let's get a layman's definition for this, um, what it is. And they basically said, it's the indent at the end of the weld bead. And that's exactly what it is. It's that spot where you stop, it's usually circular or uh, ovalish and that's the crater, all right? It's where you stop. The reason crater cracking, or sorry, the reason craters are very important is because they're, they're prone to crater cracking. You see down here, crater cracking. Um, very common in aluminum and uh, some tool steels and things like that. You'll get, the crater will have like, um, kind of like a spider web coming out of it because it cools too quickly and then it cracks. So that's why craters are extremely important because they're prone to crater cracking. Um, I looked up on Google to see what they had for like official definitions and what the what the uh, crater is called and uh, what they basically said was shrinkage cavity which it makes sense because when it's solidifying it shrinks and that's what causes the, the actual cracking but then there's also fisheye which i've heard a, a, a bunch of times in the industry and i kind of forgot about but uh, shrinkage cavity fisheye crater is the official term though all right so let's get back down to crater cracking common in aluminum i got written over there which we kind of already went over and we're going to raise this up here so what causes it it's internal stresses, all right? So as internal stresses, as this is shrinking, it causes crater cracking. So uh, you gotta understand what it is, gotta understand what causes it, but you also gotta understand how to, how to fix it, right? Now, I wrote down here, defect, full cross section, less than full, all right? If you have a crater that is less than full to the full cross section of the weld, it is considered a rejectable defect. That's what I was talking about with that quiz that I was giving. If it's not filled with a full cross section of the weld, it's a defect, it's rejectable, all right? So how do you do that? You fill it in, that's all it is. So let's get down here to, um, I always write fixes, but how do you fix it? So if you're welding uh, aluminum with TIG, or gas tonic snark welding, when I get done with that um, weld, when I get to the crater, I ease up on the pedal very slowly. I don't want it to, to um, cool too quickly because that's what causes it to crack. And I also like swirl it around, ease it up, ease it up, ease it up, extinguish it. Also, you might want to give it another little dab at the end. So ease it up and then give it some more um, amperage, put another dab in there to make sure it's filled with the full cross section. It's got enough material to keep it from cracking. Back step, I wrote that. When I'm doing uh, aluminum with uh, like a MIG, like a push pull gun or something, I finish the weld, I stop, and I always tell people that if they're watching me, 
hold on a minute, and then I zap it one more time to eliminate the creator cracking. And I've blinded more people doing that because they think I'm done welding, and they lift up their hood, and then I zap it one more time, just time to blind them. I tell them that I'm gonna do that, but people still do it, so. It's kind of like a backstop, so like, you just gotta fill that in. And at the end of the day, right here, fill to the full cross section. If you do that, you'll probably eliminate um, crater cracking. Uh, just ease up on the pedal if you're TIG welding, and when you get done MIG welding, zap it one more time to make sure that fills up. So what we'll do now is we'll go out and we'll look for some uh, good examples of craters in welds. They don't have to be in aluminum. There's craters in just about every weld there is. At the end, it's that little circle or oval shape, and I'll get some small ones and some big ones, and we'll take a look at them here. So we're going to start with a TIG weld here. So it's very small. It's about an eighth of an inch. There's the bead right there at the end. That is the crater. I, I drew an arrow, but I had a Sharpie, so it wasn't very fine-tipped. But that right there is the crater. You go find one out of aluminum. All right, this is a beautiful example. It's an aluminum, looks like a pulse weld with a MIG gun. That is a rejectable crater right there. See how it's not filled into the full cross section? I'm whoop. Sorry about that. I'm gonna reject that part if I'm an inspector. Alright. It's a beautiful example of a crater that's not acceptable. Now if they would have hit that with one more little pulse of weld, it'd probably be okay. That's the crater at the very end. I'm gonna go look for one on an actual part now. Okay, this is a steel MIG weld. You can see right at the end, there's a crater. It looks kind of rough in the video, but it's actually acceptable. But again, that's the crater right at the end. That was what you need to know is that that is the crater. If you don't know that that's the crater, that's bad. All right. So I'm going to go back up into the classroom, describe our Facebook thing, and then we'll be out of here. So real quick, I just want to describe the, the Facebook thing we're doing here. There's been an increasing demand for online instruction for welding. That's why I have a YouTube station and things like that. We also have a Facebook, but we started a Facebook group, and I have it pulled up right here, called TV Weld, Welding Help and Suggestions. And we want to be able to bring in people that are learning how to weld, ask questions on here, and get good answers, not just be a jerk. And uh, I guess welders can be kind of uh, rude when it comes to looking at welds, right? Nobody's ever admitted that somebody else is a better welder than them, right? So that's the way it is, I guess. But we're gonna try and keep it civil, I guess, is the proper term for it. So I put the link, or the website, in the actual description on this video. So all you gotta do is click on it, it'll take you to TV Weld, Welding Help and Suggestions. In that group, we're gonna have, we have a welding engineer, we have welding inspectors, we have decades of welding experience, fabrication, things like that. These people are going to be in this group, all right? So if you have questions on learning how to weld, get into this TV Weld Welding Help and Suggestions group. And if you have questions, I'm on there. I can answer questions or those other guys can. Um, we have a serious amount of experts that are going to be in this group. So we're trying to make this an online resource for people that are learning how to weld. Again, it's TV Weld Welding Help and Suggestions. And I hope you uh, go check it out. Um, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching, subscribing to TV Weld, and uh, we're going to get out of here. Hopefully you know what a crater is.